Good morning. It's good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we gather around God's Word and God's sacrament. This morning is an exciting day. We get to start with the sacrament of baptism. And so we begin our worship by singing a baptismal hymn, hymn number 590, which is Baptize into your name, most holy. We turn to page 268 for the order of holy baptism. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How are you to be named? All right. 
Tammy Elizabeth Olson. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water and dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Cammie according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in her, which has been inherited from Adam, and which she herself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the Church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens, and the Evangelical Lutheran Church sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Cami as sponsors in the Christian faith? God enable you both to will and to do this faithful, loving work with his grace, fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, he put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen congregation may be seated. Although Cammie's old enough to answer all these questions on her own, we're still going to make all of you answer with her, okay? And she just took a big sigh of relief, okay? All right, so Cammie, do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Now you guys can't answer this question, all right? Cammie, do you desire to be baptized? Cammie Elizabeth Olson. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you receive Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we may hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Cammie the new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Peace be with you. Amen. congregation may be seated. I now invite any children forward for a, uh, a, for a special message.
on page 1026. And our Old Testament reading proclaims that God will send his messenger to prepare his way before him. The prophet asks, Who can stand when that day comes? For all will need to be refined and blessed. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soul. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord in the days of old. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker and his the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the soldier and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statue. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes to us from the first chapter of Philippians, verses 2 through 11, found on page 1255. And our epistle reading is part of Paul's greetings of the Philippians. He talks about being prepared for the day of the Lord. Paul wishes that their love may abound so that they can be pure and blameless in the day of the Lord. Paul right. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for all for you all making my prayer with joy, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion the day of Jesus Christ. It is right that you feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense of confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may improve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand and continue with the olive oil. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teach 
Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is probably not the best way to start a sermon, but I have to get up on my soapbox this morning and actually proclaim about our word of God for today. I'm on my high horse because of Malachi chapter 3. Now, if you want a 30-second Bible study on the book of Malachi, here it is, the whole book. All right, Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament, and it's a book that is a series of six disputations. In Malachi, in each of these disputations, God himself, or the prophet, says something. The people then dispute this claim, but with the question of how. 
Then God answers their question with a proof that what God or the prophet says is true. So why am I on my high horse? Well, our reading for today comes from the middle of one of these disputations. We get the part where God's going to prove his final words in this current disputation. But we don't get the actual disputation between God and his people. It's cut off from the rest of our reading. Now, if you were to study Malachi, you would find out that the versification of the book of Malachi is at best a joke. I grieve every time our three-year lectionary series uses a reading from Malachi because it follows the English versification and butchers the actual text and the amazing disputations between God and his people. So let me show you what I mean. Take out your pew Bibles. And this is probably going to completely backfire on me because if you turn to Malachi chapter 3, it's on page 1026, right? And if you turn to it earlier you will notice that chapter 3 begins right at the very top of the page in our pew Bible. So those who are following along on the uh, internet, you'll have a different Bible, so it won't be such a, so dramatic. But our pew Bibles, chapter 3 starts a new page. So you actually have to then go back to the page before, to 1025. And you look at the very bottom, and notice that the heading for this section begins before verse 17. The messenger of the Lord. Okay? And it expects chapter 3, at least the first part, to go with it. Alright? So, so let's take a look at this disputation that we didn't get to read earlier today. Okay? On page 1025. Alright? It starts off with, you have wearied the Lord with your words. All right, so in this case, Malachi is laying out God's complaint. But you say, how have we wearied him? Right, so they dispute, the people dispute, and here's that how question. In this case, how have we wearied God? And then here is God's response by saying, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. And he delights in them, or by asking, where is the God of justice? Right? So, and then we turn the page. We get chapter 3. And God responds, right? Behold, I send my messenger. And we get the rest of our text. Right? But this back and forth is all set up for us to understand chapter 3, right? And so this missing disputation where people com complain that, that, that evil people must be considered good by God because why? They're successful and they're getting away with murder. They believe that God is no longer a God of justice, but only one of success. And he could care less if they get that success by hook or by crook. At least that's what their eyes are telling them. And then our text is God's response to this problem. In one sense, people today can relate with this disputation. It seems that evil people are winning in this world right now. People are constantly complaining about a lack of justice in many situations. Then in clear situations where justice needs to be changed, people will just downright oppose proper justice then it seems that those who are in charge, right, or those who have been elected to be in charge, they just climb the back of the poor, the workers, the widows, the orphans, and anyone else that might get in their way. Today's world, adulterers and murderers are even celebrated. Those who do not fear God seems to be the ones moving up in society. As a Christian, Sometimes it's very hard to do social media because Christians are supposed to live by the Eighth Commandment. But no one else has to. They can swear falsely, destroy a person's reputation with no evidence. 
put everything in the worst light, and they gain more and more followers. While faithful Christians get left behind, mocked, and torn apart online everywhere else. In other words, what we deal with today isn't so different than the time of Malachi. Now our actual text is God's response to these accusations about what was going on. And his response begins with a promise of a messenger. Another Malachi. And oh, how I wish you guys could read this in the Hebrew because it literally says Malachi, my messenger. That a messenger will prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. In other words, God's saying, I see what's going on. He hears their prayer prayers and complaints, and God promises that he is personally going to take care of this problem. I mean, take a look at what he says here in this first verse. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Notice that he doesn't just promise that the messenger would come, but the Lord himself would come after him. And this is where the lectionary then gets this text right. We read these verses today because this messenger is John the Baptist from our gospel reading. He's preparing the way of the Lord. As our text asks, who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller soap. In other words, this messenger is coming with a very powerful message, a message of judgment, of purification. And no one can stand tall or stand at all at that message. And it's interesting to think about this for a second. Who are the people who are complaining in this disputation? Right? I assume... It's the faithful people who are trying to keep God's commandments as purely and perfectly as they can. These are the people who want to do what God commands. But when this messenger comes, no one can stand. Definitely not the evil people, and definitely not the ones trying their hardest to be the most righteous. And this is why we have to be careful about how we complain and talk about other people and especially the people of this world. When God's law came through John, all the people were to repent. But guess who didn't repent? The religious leaders and the experts of the day, the people that would have said, I know that guy is going to be okay in the refiner's fire and when they're washed with the refiner's soap. But in John and Jesus' day, they were the worst ones. I mean, the irony, so to speak, about this text in the New Testament is that the ones that have followed the law to a T were the ones who didn't execute justice, but instead were the ones that grumbled against John and Jesus. And they wanted to silence them. And ultimately, their opposition led to Jesus' death on the cross. In other words, the messenger and the Lord himself came and those who thought they were the ones that were righteous and ready were just as evil, unjust, inhumane, and the most awful of all the sinners. And that's why we need to be reminded of this message of John the Baptist that's shared with you. When the law of God is purely and properly proclaimed, none of us can stand. That fire burns against our very being. The word of God that is meant to cleanse us of all our mistakes, and not just the mistakes of everyone else, but your own mistakes. Those you remember, and those you've forgotten. As Malachi 3 verse 5 says, Then I will draw near to you for judgment. And let's be honest. There can be no bigger message of judgment than the truth that your sins nailed God in the flesh to the cross. 
But God also says, I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. I mean, this is the most amazing part of this whole message. Jesus offered his body on the cross for people like you and me. A pleasing offering that leads to forgiveness. A day is coming that you will be able to stand in God's judgment. Not because you're good enough or holy enough or because you did enough of the law, but because the Lord came to your world and offered his life on the cross for you. Our Lord was willing to be betrayed, arrested, denied, hated, mocked, and crucified for you. For the ignored widows and the orphans, for the adulterers and those who swear falsely, for the oppressed worker, for the foreigners, and even for everyone who doesn't fear God. For Jesus came to die for and to forgive sinners both the best of sinners and the worst of sinners, whatever that might be. Because when the law of God brings you to your knees as it should, the Lord comes up to you with justice and righteousness. And when you look up to the Lord, instead of finding a sword or an angry hand, you find a nail-marked, nail-pierced hand picking you up and helping you to stand in his presence, in his perfect presence, and eternal presence. And he finds you to be pleasing, to share with God his Father, this is my child. You are now forgiven and can stand holy and blameless in God's judgment because of what God himself did for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We now continue our worship by turning to page 192 in our hymnals as we sing the offertory. Please be seated as we continue with our offering.
please stand for prayer. O Lord our God, you declared Israel to be your people and brought them out of Egypt. You desired their salvation even when they would not listen to your voice. Since you have called and gathered us also to be your people, open our hearts to listen and gladly submit to your word. We especially thank you that you have called Cami to be your child through holy baptism this day. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of the Lord as prophesied by Isaiah who foretold the Christ. Remember those pastors whom you've called to proclaim your word today. Give them wisdom and encourage, encourage as they admonish and absolve your people by your word. That your sins might be prepared for Christ's coming again in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you gather your people together in Christ and make them partakers of your grace. Strengthen the faith of those you've gathered into this congregation, that their love may abound more and more with all knowledge and discernment. Lead us to approve what is excellent and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, as you call and gather us into your family, so bless the households of this congregation. Bless husband and wives, fathers and mothers, as they go about their work of strengthening marriage and raising children. Let their love abound more and more with knowledge and discernment, and fill their homes with the righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, St. John the Baptist counseled penitent soldiers to go about their military duties according to your word. Remember those who served in the armed forces. Protect them from harm. Give them wisdom and courage, and grant that they fulfill their duties honorably. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, your forerunner prepared the way for the one who is mightier than all, your Son, Jesus. For Christ's sake, we entrust to you those in need of healing, comfort, and rescue, especially Jane, Deb, Marcy, Myron, Larry, Helen, Jerry, Lois, Eileen, Bernie, Ken, Shirley, Bridge, Marion, Kay, and Iona. Have mercy upon them. Deliver them according to your will, and strengthen them in faith that they might be assured of your faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, by the word of your servant, you prepared all flesh to see the salvation of God. Prepare also the hearts of all who kneel at your altar today to receive worthily Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, in your mercy. Teaching God, guide Trinity Lutheran School with your love. Be with our teachers as they continue to lead our children into your loving arms. Be with our students that they may grow in faith and grow closer to you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now continue on page 194 with the preface. Please note that in our communion liturgy, we will not be praying the Lord's Prayer as we've already prayed it during our baptismal liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand as we continue with the Nunc Dimittis. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you refresh us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Blessed we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And we remain standing for our closing hymn, 348, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns. Please be seated. Well, it's good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we gather around God's Word and God's sacraments, as we're reminded that God sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for
for the Lord so that we could be brought to our knees through his law and be lifted up by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Exciting to have a baptism today of Cammie. I'm, I'm probably more excited than she is looking at her, her red face right now. But uh, um, yeah, so, so always exciting to have a baptism. And it's cool because Cammie's birthday is in December, isn't it, Cammie? So everyone who has a birthday in December, please stand up. You have to stand up, Cammie. No? All right, and we're going to sing happy birthday to you all. Happy birthday to you. All right, happy birthday to all of you. And for everyone, including the birthday people, there are birthday treats downstairs. What are we having? Are we having bars? Cupcakes and muffins are down there for you to, to enjoy today. So happy birthday to, to each of you. Um, also, uh, our Advent series continues this Wednesday. Um, shall I, should I stay or should I go? This week, we're going to focus on Joseph taking his family to Egypt, so they had to leave. Um, and we will have our Christmas cantata this Wednesday and next Sunday as well. And this Wednesday, next Sunday, for our new board members and officers, we have our installation as well this coming week. So I uh, hope that you guys can be here for all that exciting, exciting stuff. Um, we still have a few requests left on our giving tree for clothing items for foster care kids in Columbia County. So if you want to take an ornament home, that'd be great. We just need them returned next Sunday so I can drop them off at the office on Monday. Any other announcements? This is Jonas. All right, I, th I was told 1 o'clock. That's what I was told on Wednesday. Yeah, I don't know. But bring them in by noon, okay? All right, so if you're baking cookies for our cookie walk next Saturday, this coming Saturday, have them in here on, on Friday by 12 o'clock. Lori, did you have your hand up? All right, script cards are available, and if you need to order some, get them in soon because she's going to make a big order, and they're going to come all at once. All right, any other announcements? None, then let's conclude with the Bible verse of the month. They desire a better country that is a heavenly one. God's blessings to you this week.